poor boy was lucky. He picked up a $10 bill on the side of the road and didn't hand it over to the police, turned around and ran into the shop. He bought a bar of chocolate. He ripped open the bag, and a blessing came from heaven, and was blessed with a golden ticket, worth hundreds of millions of dollars. There was something about this golden ticket. It's a ticket to the world's largest chocolate factory. There are only five of them in the world. The owner was dumbfounded that the last golden ticket would be in his little shop. An older man with a bad smile put his arm around the child. I'll give you 50, plus a skin. Give me the roll. How's that? The ant next to him glares at the man. I'll give you a hundred plus ten skins. I'll take the voucher. The kindly owner warned them not to go down the path of crime, reminding the boy to hurry home. The boy ran wild all the way. This opportunity he had waited for too long. Not long ago, suddenly the streets were plastered with notices, saying that death, the owner of the chocolate factory, had announced. Five golden tickets were hidden in the chocolate production. The children who drew the tickets would get a free tour of the factory, and that one of them would win a mystery prize. People are going crazy. Fatty is an avid fan of Dove chocolates. He just keeps on eating and eating and eating. One day, something different came out of his mouth. It turned out to be a golden coupon that had been bitten off. Next, this is a spoilt young lady. How spoiled? A father who would buy every local chocolate of the same type for her, then shut down his own factory. He would order the workers to dismantle them for three days and nights. Finally, she gets her wish, and this boy, Sean, he wanted to go to the factory too, but his family was so poor that, even the house was small and slanted, he could only have a chocolate on his birthday, Sean slowly opened the package, the family held their breath in anticipation, but alas, no miracle happened, Sean was disappointed to share the chocolates with the family, but grandpa didn't want them, it was his birthday present, but Sean knew what to do, in his mind, whether it's chocolate, or a golden ticket, is not as important as his family, his grandfather was so concerned about his grandson that, at the end of the day, he took out the money he had saved for 80 years, he asked asked Sean to buy a second bar of chocolate. The grandfather and grandson closed their eyes in anticipation. He quickly unwrapped it, but there was still nothing. Soon after, golden tickets were drawn one by one. The chances were getting slimmer and slimmer. Sean could only look at the factory in dismay. On the way home, Sean found a $10 bill. He rushed into a nearby shop and drew a piece. He didn't expect to win this time. Can you believe it? This piece of chewing gum that has been chewed by this little girl for three whole months to become the champion gum chewer. She's only 10 years old. She has over 200 trophies at home. She is quite competitive. She lives by the motto. There is no second place, no first place. She bought chocolates, too, and easily chewed her way to the golden ticket. And this little boy is a strong, powerful. He's a little arithmetic genius. And the boy is a genius at arithmetic. And the changing weather of the transport. He got the fourth golden ticket. The last one to receive a golden ticket was Sean. The sensible Sean learned that his father was unemployed again. The family could no longer afford to eat. The golden ticket is not a meal, but if they were converted into money, they would be enough to keep the family afloat. But grandpa tells Sean that, if the money is gone, you can earn it, but if the dream is gone, it is gone. So Sean was determined to go on a factory tour with his grandfather. The day of the tour arrived. The factory gates were packed with people. The gates opened slowly. Children walked in, accompanied by their parents. A strange looking man appeared in front of them. He was the owner of the factory. Depp. He leads the group on a tour of the factory. This place is like the kingdom of the elves. It was all made of chocolate. Even the waterfall is made of chocolate. There are also a bunch of working men that Depp has hired from the rainforest. At this moment, Fatty is enjoying the chocolate in the river. Suddenly his foot slips, and he falls into the river. A giant straw is sucked out of the river. Fatty is the first child to be eliminated. The rest of the children followed. Depp on the boat and continued the tour. The boat bounced violently in the chocolate river. Finally it stopped in front of the invention room. The children worked on the various chemicals. Depp introduced everyone to the latest invention. A chewing gum that doesn't need to be eaten. It can even be imagined in all sorts of flavors. The girl can't help herself. She's never been afraid to chew. One bite of gum. The next moment. Her whole body starts to turn purple. Her limbs swelled up into big balls. It turns out that the gum was only a half-finished experiment. She ended up as a giant blueberry. She had to be sent for juicing first. Another one is eliminated. Depp takes the rest of the group to the nut room. Inside are a group of professionally trained squirrels. They broadcast large whole pine cones. The girl with the money has taken a shine to the squirrels. She yelled that she had to have one. So, despite all the obstacles, she got in. She couldn't wait to get to the squirrels. Just as she was about to grab the squirrel, all the squirrels quickly attacked her. They pounced on her and knocked her to the ground. A squirrel jumped on the girl's body and knocked on her head. The ear was pressed to it and listens carefully. Convinced that it was a bad fruit, he ordered the mice to carry her away and threw her into the bottomless rubbish room. The girl was eliminated too. Now only Sean and the little genius are left. They step into a transparent lift. This lift not only moves up and down, it can also run sideways and diagonally. They go through every corner of the factory. They end up in the TV room. This is where they find one of Depp's greatest inventions, the TV chocolate candy. The little people carry a giant chocolate under a huge glare of light. 
The chocolate disappears. Then it appeared in the TV set. Sean had the courage to go and get it. He actually took it out. He opened it and took a bite. It tasted the same as the original chocolate. The little genius was furious. He thought it was a waste to use the machine just to deliver chocolate. It was a waste. Turning around, he jumped into the machine. A bright light shone. He is literally transported to the TV, but also becomes a minifigure. He was sent to the toffee room by the minifigure, pulled back to his old size. So Sean was the lucky last one. They got on the lift together and the, the lift soared into the sky, landed in Sean's house. Depp announced the final prize. Sean would be his successor in the chocolate factory. Sean is excited. Depp makes one condition. Only Sean will be allowed to live in the factory. Depp's unhappy childhood makes him feel that his family is a burden. His father is a dentist. His father, a dentist, gave him mechanical braces from an early age. He was not allowed to eat sugar, but all he ever wanted to do was make sweets. So he ran away from home and he never came home again. But Sean believes that his family is the most important thing. He refuses Depp's request. This shocked Depp. Such a large fortune. Although someone would be foolish enough to refuse, but he didn't force to turn away. Little did he know that life was slowly getting better for the Sean family. But Depp was always sulking over the incident that day. Depp meets up with Sean again. Depp asks Sean what he could do to make himself feel better. Sean tells him to spend time with his family. Of course, so they take a lift back to Depp's old house. His father is still a dentist, and the house is plastered with news stories about Depp. Over the years, he had only been quietly following everything his son was doing. Depp was finally touched. Father and son embraced each other. They were back together. He finally felt the love of a father he had been missing for so long. To repay Sean, Depp gave him the factory. Depp gave him the factory. He allowed him to move his cottage into the factory. Perhaps only the love of a parent can withstand the flood of a parent can withstand the flood of time. One day when you are tired, always remember to turn around, no matter what time it is, they are still be-